What is going on everyone and welcome to r slash pro revenge the home of the best revenge stories on the whole of the internet Now i've chosen two today that are no different. They are excellent stories. Let's jump straight into the first one Steal my medication. I'll make you seriously regret it So when I was 15 I was diagnosed with bipolar schizophrenia now despite what tv shows and movies portray not all schizophrenics are serial killers if you can keep your medication in balance you can live a perfectly normal life from the age of 15 to 20 it was rather hard as we tried to find the right balance and medication for me but it's been 11 years since i was first diagnosed and it's been six years since i have had any really bad symptoms there have been a few minor issues where my meds would go out of balance but nothing too extreme Anyway, this happened three years ago. I had just moved into a new apartment with two new roommates. We will call them Zach and Rachel. Yes, those are their real names, cause F them. Oh my God, here we go. Anyways, due to my illness, I take multiple medications, an antipsychotic, antidepressants, and an anti-anxiety medication to name a few. Now these are all rather strong medications. So when I moved out and got settled in, I started to notice that some of my meds started to go missing. I have my pills counted out and ready, so I knew exactly how many I have. I immediately suspected my roommates, as they were the only ones with access to my room. I also knew for a fact they took other medications to get high. They were pretty open about it. But I had no proof, and I didn't want to risk annoying them, as I had to live with them. So I looked past it, hoping it was a one-time thing, but it wasn't. After a few days of this, I lost it and confronted them. They denied it, and of course, I had no proof. I even got a lock for my room, but somehow they still managed to get in. So, here is where the revenge starts. Due to all my medication, I get constipated a lot. So, I have a very strong laxative I take when this happens. They are tiny pinkish pills. If you don't know about medication, you could easily mistake these for something else. One morning before heading to work, I took my antipsychotic pill bottles and switched out the pills for my laxatives. And then I left. When I came home that evening, both my roommates were in the washrooms. I asked Rachel what was wrong, and she made up some BS food poisoning excuse. They spent the whole night in and out of their bathrooms. Funnily enough, my medication stopped disappearing after that night. Now guys, for me, what OP has just done there is some of the most beautiful revenge you could do because it is so simple, but it is so effective. You know, what is worse for his roommates than sitting on the toilet, you know, with an upset stomach for a long amount of time? Let's be realistic. I mean, laxatives are going to clear you out. That's for sure. Do they know though? That is the question. Do they in the back of their minds think that OP has cottoned on to what they're doing and has switched out the pills for laxatives? I wonder if they do. If not, they're probably just thinking, how has this happened to both of us? What, what have we done here? But yeah, beautiful revenge really simple and completely deserved don't steal someone's medication man that is just not on now moving on to our second story that's not your car lady so this happened around 2008 my buddy brock had gotten out of the military after 10 years he started in the marines but transitioned into the army for the last four years before buying a house in texas when he got out he did a variety of jobs before landing a gig with a repo service he worked there for a year and had a lot of wild stories but this one sticks out the most as he helped a fellow soldier get revenge on an evil ex brock was at the office speaking with his manager whom i'll refer to as karen now this particular karen had a lot of karen like qualities but was a force for good if you can believe that while they were talking, they see a young man enter the office. They immediately noticed he had two black eyes and one arm was in a sling. The young man, whose name I unfortunately never learned, but I'll call Ben, asked how hard it would be for them to help repossess his car. Karen called her daughter in, Karen Jr., and had her poor Ben a cup of coffee. Karen then asked Ben to tell her a story. Ben began with telling her that he had just returned from a deployment. He had been dating a local girl that lived outside of the famous Fort Hood. Not a good idea, by the way, before the deployment. Thanks to a previous deployment, he had managed to get himself a used black Dodge Charger, which was his baby. He further explained that shortly after buying the car, he had met the local girl, who, for the sake of the story, I'll call Morgan. Morgan was always asking to drive his car, but he would always decline. When he was getting ready for his deployment, Morgan repeatedly asked if she could borrow the car, but he kept saying no. After much needling, he relented, but on the one condition that she take care of his apartment until he comes back from rest and relaxation leave. 
She agreed. Ben left for his deployment while Morgan took care of his place. When Ben came back for leave, he found his apartment immaculate. He pulled his car from storage and drove to Morgan's. He spent a few days with her before handing her the keys and heading to his home state to visit family before returning to his deployments. He returned again from his deployment and found nothing but trouble. When he walked into his apartment, he found a layer of dust on just about every surface. It was almost like no one had been there in months. When he checked his bedroom, he'd found his room had been torn apart. All of his drawers had been searched and upturned. He tried to call Morgan, but never received an answer. He located his safe, which was hidden, and found it hadn't been touched. He then grabbed his spare key from the safe, called a buddy of his, and they went to Morgan's. As they pulled up to Morgan's, he saw a car there that he initially didn't recognize. But as they got closer, he realized it was his baby. Morgan had the car painted hot pink and put 24 inch spinners on it. He tried the key just to make sure and the lights flickered as it unlocked. While his buddy laughed, Ben went to the front door and Morgan answered. He asked what happened to his car and she responded, it's my car now. Ben walked away and hopped in his hot pink mess. As he started it, four large dudes came out of Morgan's house one with a baseball bat and yanked Ben out of his car. They proceeded to beat the heck out of him in the driveway before his friend intervened, pulling his conceal and carry pistol on the group. He then took Ben to the hospital. I'm honestly not sure if the cops were called on this. I'd assume yes, but even then, Ben said his friend drove by Morgan's house a handful of times while he was in the hospital at random times and the car was never there. So jumping back into the present now, Karen stared at Ben for a bit before asking for the paperwork. Ben handed it to her and Karen had a smile form on her face. She then asked Ben for Morgan's phone number. Ben gave it, but wasn't aware of what was about to happen. Karen handed the phone to Karen Jr. who then dialed the number. Karen Jr. then began speaking to Morgan, telling her that they'd met at one of the local clubs and wanting to know if she was down to party that night. Apparently, Morgan agreed, and the plan was set. Brock parked his tow truck at the club and waited. Sure enough, Morgan showed up with the pink monster, parked it, and went inside with some girlfriends. Brock gave them five minutes before he stealthily drove up to the car and hooked it up to the back of his tow truck. As he was pulling out with the pink monster, Morgan walked out of the club. She saw her car on the back of the tow truck and began trying to flag Brock down, but he was already out of there. The next day, it was business as usual at the office when Morgan called. She was furious that her car was stolen by them and wanted it back. Karen, using her best customer service voice, told her if she had the registration, she could come and pick it up. Morgan began screaming louder that she was gonna call the cops, at which point Karen sarcastically told her, please do, and then hung up on her. As this phone call was going on, Brock happened to look out the window and saw Morgan standing next to a car in a vacant lot, throwing what appeared to be a temper tantrum. After Karen hung up, Brock watched her get in the car on the passenger side. Karen then looked out the window and had Brock verify it was her. She then began to smirk. Karen then proceeded to call the owner of the property Morgan and her friend were occupying. She told the owner about the car and asked if he wanted it towed. The owner okayed it. Brock then drove his truck over to the ladies in the car and introduced himself. They tried to explain that they were waiting for Morgan's boyfriend, but Brock insisted they weren't allowed to park there. They argued and called him every name in the book. Brock then hooked up their car and lifted it partially off the ground, forcing the two to exit the vehicle. They tore into him until he showed them the tow order. While this was going back and forth, Ben arrived at the office and Morgan saw him walk in. She ran to the office door and Brock proceeded to lower the car. When Brock went back to the office, all heck had broken loose. Morgan apparently tried to snag the keys back from Ben, but he pocketed them. She began to hit him in his hurt arm and warned Ben that she'd call her friends to finish the job if she didn't get her keys back. Karen Jr. had already called the cops at this point and Brock got in between Ben and Morgan, even telling Morgan to try hitting him to find out what would happen. Morgan then tried to play the pity card and said she only wanted the keys to get her laptop out for school. Karen asked Ben to hand the keys over to Brock so he could grab the laptop. Brock retrieved the laptop from the car and as he was handing it over, she rushed to aggressively grab it, but ended up knocking it from Brock's hands. 
Completely furious at this point, Morgan accused Brock of dropping the computer on purpose and threatened to sue. The cops then arrived and Morgan began her sob story again, telling the police that they stole her car. The police questioned Karen and Karen gave her a casual smirk while asking if they wanted to see the security videos. The police watched and listened as Morgan punched Ben several times and heard the threat she made about sending her friends after him. The police then turned to Morgan, who had turned ghost white at this point. She tried to back her way to the door, but the police stopped her. They proceeded to ask about the car, Ben's injuries, and who she planned on sending after him. She initially denied everything, but they already had evidence on her beating him up. She was arrested and Ben got his car back. After the cops left, Ben admitted he didn't want to be seen in a car that looked like it was advertising Pepto-Bismol and planned on trading it in for a GTO. We later heard through the grapevine that the four guys who beat up Ben were arrested. Morgan had ratted them out. Brock had a few more stories, but none of them were nearly as good as this one. Oh, wow, guys, I'm not surprised one little bit that Morgan ended up snitching on her mates. I don't know what you call them, bodyguards, people that she knew that she hired maybe to end up beating up her boyfriend. Who knows? But um, yeah, I'm really not surprised because she seems like the exact sort of person that when she's actually put in trouble a little bit or she's, you know, she's caught out for doing such horrible things like stealing someone's car, um, then yeah, she would just snitch on people that helped her. Not really that surprising in order to, you know, try and save her own self in that situation. I've got a question though for you guys, actually. I'm just thinking about this myself. What do you think is worse? Stealing Ben's car or stealing Ben's car and then giving it the worst paint spray you've ever heard of in your life? Pink. That's a tough, you know, it's a topic of discussion that I'm not even sure I want to go down because getting a pink wrap, that is, ah, that is really horrible on a dodge. Really? Never seen that before in my life. Horrible stuff. But yeah, comment down below. What do you guys think? Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of r slash pro revenge. If you want more right away, check out more. It's brilliant. This playlist right here full of pro revenge stories. Also, if you are new here, make sure to subscribe by hitting this button and check out some merch as well at the bottom. If you want some of this lovely merch that I'm wearing right now, it is top quality. So check it out.